All right, here we are going into a new, actually a refreshed version of this tutorial on a, creating a looping background. Um, so we have a few objects, trees in the foreground with the landscape kind of moving across as if we're kind of panning through. Um, we've got a hot air balloon kind of floating around and bird animated uh, flying through, which comes from an earlier tutorial um, that we've gone through already. So. What we'll do to get started in this is go File New, create a 554 um, dimension and Action Script 3 to get going here. We'll create three layers for each um, layer of our landscape. First one is the foreground, second one will be the middle ground, and third one will kind of be the background. And so Let's go ahead and start by drawing our foreground shape here. We'll take our pen tool, um, go ahead and just kind of draw a rocky-ish type shape here with maybe a few craters. We can always edit this shape later on. Let it go off the side of your stage a little bit here, come across the bottom, off the edge of the side of the stage, and then back to the beginning point here. We're then going to take our fill bucket and I'm going to just fill it with a flat color for right now. I'm actually, it doesn't even matter what color. Um, but think about what kind of scene you're trying to animate here, um, whether or not you're animating under the sea or if you're animating, you know, a grassy plain or if you're animating the desert, you know, you can make this whatever color you feel like you'd like to. Um, I'm going to get rid of this outline. The way I'll do that is just click on the frame here in my animation. I could click and drag a box around this whole shape. If I hold shift and click on the filled part, it will give me just a selection of the outlines and then I'll hit delete to get rid of that outline. Now what I can do is maybe go ahead in and click and drag, maybe edit some of this shape a little bit here and make that not so steep maybe curve parts of this so that they're not so rigid everywhere. All right, and just kind of getting that decent. I'm gonna change the colors of it though. Um, so what we'll do next is kind of take this landscape that we have here, I just kind of want to change that little shape there. All right, I'm going to take this and like I said, we're going to make it a gradient actually now. That's going to give us a little better dimension here as far as seeing a little bit more like it's in 3D space. I'm going to actually go with kind of like a tan brownish to a lighter brown sort of gradient going here. Let's see, make that a little bit on the brighter side. That works. And so now what I'll do is I'll need to rotate this gradient. So we'll take our gradient transform tool. If you don't see it, it might be living underneath our free transform tool here. We'll go to gradient transform and then grab the circle on the corner here to rotate your gradient. And then grab this box in the center line here and click and drag to bring it down so that we can change, change the adjustment of the positioning of that gradient. And maybe you want to change the amount or the placement of it vertically there as well. Something that I am noticing that's good about what I had on here was I had my snapping objects edge on here. So this uh, edge at the bottom goes pretty straight across as line to my stage. That's gonna be make things look nice and smooth at the end um, when we have our finished product here. But for right now, now let's go ahead and we're going to make this doubly wide. So I'm just going to zoom out here for a second. Go ahead and click on this. Actually, before we make it double wide, we're going to convert this to a symbol, convert it to a graphic. We're going to call this foreground or 4G. And now what we'll do is hold the option key and click and drag this graphic over here to create a duplicate. I'm going to move these in a little bit closer together so that they touch and then um, maybe move it down just a smidge so they line up. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. 
if they're not perfect. Um, now what I'll do is I'm going to combine these into one graphic. So they'll move all together in, with a classic tween. So if I hold shift and click on both of them, now I'm gonna hit F8 or I can go to right click and convert to symbol. And I'll just call this four. My other one was called 4G. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, fix this little bit here that doesn't quite line up right. I'm gonna double click on this big graphic now and I'll see my two other graphics inside of it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Now I just need to edit one of these graphics. I don't need to edit both. If I edit one, that should be all I need to do. Oops, so uh, click off the edge so that's not highlighted. Then you'll be able to kind of change, manipulate your shapes easy clicking and dragging. Um, so that makes a pretty nice memorable point here. This um, peak, I'm actually gonna move this just a bit so it's right on the edge of my stage there. Um, you'll see why that's helpful later, but that's gonna be a good point to remember where I need to tell my graphic to move across and stop on that point. So if you can kind of make a peak um, with your original first foreground shape that happens, right on the edge of your stage there, that will be helpful later. So now we're gonna go ahead and try and draw the middle ground. And so again, I'm gonna take my pen tool, um, start with kind of a, kind of like a house-like shape, um, and then go to about my middle point, about halfway across my stage would be the right size for this, and then click across to close. I'll go ahead and fill this again, any color will do. This actually is gonna end up being a greenish color. So I'll take green for now as placeholder. Click on this frame that the shape is on in order to then hold shift and click. And we're gonna take this outline out again. So hit delete then to get rid of your outline. Now we'll go ahead and take our um, color mixer with this highlighted. Take our color mixer here. We'll go back to linear gradient. It's going to make it the same gradient we had before, but we'll go ahead and update this with some new colors. So I'll go for like a green to like a lighter green. That looks like it has pretty good contrast there. I'll take my gradient transform tool and again, rotate this 90 degrees or 45, 90, I don't know. And then maybe just squish that in a little bit. That should work pretty good. Maybe I'll take this and move it up just a slight bit so the lighter part is really just on the top. Um, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead with my selection arrow and if the shape isn't highlighted, I'll be able to bend kind of these lines on the edge here, make this kind of go down a little bit. So I get a little bit of a curve here in my hill. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I'm having some issues with this point here. Just gonna move it maybe up and then smooth that out a little bit there. That seems like it'll work pretty good. Um, again, we can always make edits and changes later. I do need to now save this as a graphic, so I'm gonna right click, go to convert to symbol, or hit the F8 key on my keyboard, and I'll go ahead and call this the mid G. And then again, hold the Alt key or Option key, click and drag to make a copy and kind of put that next to it. We're actually gonna make two copies of this one. Again, holding the Alt key, click and dragging the Alt or Option key out to this point. Now, something else I'm gonna do again here is kind of line up the edge of this at a point where I can see where it should uh, stop. So what I will do is go ahead, actually, I think these maybe want to be slightly wider. I'm just going to check um, my previous versions here just to make sure. Yeah, we actually want to make sure that that second graphic goes outside of our stage. So back to where we're working here. These, I want them all to be a little bit wider. So uh, what I want to do, actually, is I really only have to edit one. I'm gonna take my free transform tool here, hit this one graphic and stretch it wider. Oh, so actually, command Z, what I'll need to do is actually go and double click inside of this graphic. Now, if I stretch this wider, watch what happens to the other ones. They all stretched a little bit wider. So that should be good. 
Um, now what I'll do is take these and move them so they're a little closer next to each other. So this should work because now it goes outside my second frame here. Oops, dragged my uh, anchor point there. Wasn't quite what I was going for. All right, gonna just try and zoom out here a little bit, up and a little close. So uh, now what we need to do is adjust these shapes a little bit, make them so that they overlap here. And again, what we'll kind of want to remember is where does this shape here cross this part of our stage? So um, what I could do is kind of take all three of these, and actually this is what we need to do with these as well, is take all three. I'll go ahead right now and convert them to another symbol. We'll call this mid, and that is now a graphic containing all three hills. So if we double click, we should see all three inside of our mid graphic that we just made. Um, and I think that what I was going for is that we should maybe move this, all three of them. So I'm gonna go back to my scene. I'm gonna move all three of them. So that starting point is really kind of noticeable as when this kind of slope gets to its low point there. So that'll be a little bit easier later on to make sure that I make that work the right way and go smoothly. Um, last thing we're gonna add in, and we'll need to reorganize these layers in a second. I'm gonna add the background layer here. Um, really simple, kind of just a, re a rectangle layer, rectangular shape that I'm gonna make here. Um, close that up. I'll go ahead and just take one single color. I won't really need to make this um, color anything fancy like gradient or anything. I'm gonna fill that shape and then go ahead and get rid of my outlines. You can just click on these outlines. These are gonna be easy to get rid of because it's just those four. Um, just gonna go ahead and bend this shape a little bit so it's kind of a curve there. And now, like I was saying, we gotta reorganize these. We're gonna bring this background shape to the back or the bottom and then bring this middle ground shape to the middle and then the foreground should be what's up top in front of us. Um, maybe we want to change our stage color too. Let's see, just a different shade of blue there. I actually like that first one that it gave me. There we go. Cool, so now we're ready to add some movement here to our scene. We've got all the pieces in place. We just need to make a move. So I'm gonna scroll ahead in my timeline here. We're gonna to go to the 170th frame. Um, here I'm going to click on my foreground layer. Actually, um, if I click on the 170, not click and then drag, because it's not gonna do it quite right, but I'm gonna hit Command Z there. What we wanna do is just go ahead and in a space where it's not already highlighted, click and drag. So that's gonna allow you to select multiple layers. I'll right click and go to insert keyframes here. Now what we'll do is make this foreground shape here. We're gonna make this move all the way over. And again, like I said, see that point right there should be where it will stop. Now I'll go to my middle ground. And again, we're watching where this point is here on this shape. So it's not before it starts to come up, but just when it gets down. So right about there actually will probably work. So now these are their ending keyframes, right? And then if we go back to the beginning, they should be over on that side. We're just gonna right click in between these spaces, create a couple of classic tweens for each of those layers. Oops, I did it for the background layer. Didn't mean to do that. Just the foreground layer, create classic tween. Classic tween will work best for this probably because it's just really for moving objects in simple paths like straight lines. So if I give a command return preview here, we'll see what we have and looks pretty good as far as there's very minimal skip. I think I saw a little bit of skip on this back layer. And all that I can do is really just look at maybe adjusting its positioning like just a little bit at a time. So like I said, it comes down and I wanna make sure that this point here for this shape is the same point where it ends here. So I feel like maybe I can move it over just a smidge. Again, that was so small, so minuscule, that it's not really too worth losing sleep over. But there we go, For that's pretty much it for the first part of this tutorial and kind of creating a looping background animation.